the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Welcome to all, both those in church with me and those online. Welcome to this Eucharist on the second Sunday of Lent from the parish church of St. Mary Magdalene here in Lincoln's Bay. Today. Today the sun is shining outside. May you find this time of worship a helpful and peaceful time. Let us say to them the prayer of revelation. Almighty God, to whom all, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Of these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion that he might not acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. You show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their confession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, 
and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Be not far from me, O Lord. Be not far from me, O Lord. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. O seed of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, O seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the suffering of the poor, neither has he hidden his face from them, but when they cried out to him, he heard them. Be not far from me, O Lord. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. Their heart shall live forever. Be, be not, not far from me, O Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. Be not far from me, O Lord. How can those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship, or those who go down to the dust kneel before him? He has saved my life for himself. My descendants shall serve him. This shall be told of the Lord for generations to come. They shall come and make known his salvation to a people yet unborn declaring that he, the Lord, has done it. Be not far from me, O Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is none of the promises void, for the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and, and calls into existence the things that do not exist, Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith 
when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us, us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because their great hope was the freedom from the Romans. 
especially after seeing the miracles Jesus performed and how he drew the crowds. Now, after hearing Jesus speaking, their hopes and expectations were dashed. We don't know what Peter said to Jesus, but we do know that Jesus replied and rebuked him, telling Peter he had set his mind on human things, not divine things. The ways of God are different from the world. But Jesus does not stop. He goes on to tell the disciples how he was going to die. And to save your life, and you must lose it. You must lose your life for Jesus and the gospel. This was a contradiction to the disciples' expectations and difficult for them to comprehend. And so much so that Jesus repeats this twice more. Jesus repeats it in the following two chapters. And in Mark 9, the disciples still did not understand what was being said and were afraid to ask, possibly because of the rebuke Jesus gave Peter. The third time is when Jesus told them on the journey to Jerusalem. He spoke of his impending death with a more detailed account. It was Jesus' way of trying to help them understand that my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. And trying to help them understand the point of his ministry, as he came to give his life for the salvation of them and for us. And today we know that had Jesus not been truly God incarnate, the Word made flesh, there would be no salvation. Had Jesus died on the cross and not risen, there would be no salvation. Had the message of Jesus crucified and risen not been taken to the ends of the earth, there would be no salvation. Our human nature makes us want to be prosperous, strong, successful, influential, and I could go on. But Jesus had another priority. Jesus came to serve and not to be served. His ways are not our ways. Yet we are invited to follow his way, to live lives of service to others. To serve rather than control and dominate, the opposite of proud. Lent is a time to set aside extra time to study the scriptures and Christian tradition. This is important and needs to fit in with our daily life. But the importance is not the length of time we set aside, or that we become more committed and faithful disciples. Whether this is through reading a book on a daily basis, that will take us through Lent, studying the scripture, or maybe choosing to read a psalm each day, or a combination of these, or another form of study. It is important so we may become more committed and faithful disciples. Following Jesus has a cost involved, as it does when we do something for others. It's a cost in time or money or energy, but it can make us feel good as well when we do it, because we see the joy it can bring to others. Maybe we can offer to help someone in a way they need. Or pay for a coffee for the person in front of us in the queue. Or leave a small gift on the doorstep. These are some of the examples how we can bring joy to another. But it can make us feel good when we see the joy it brings. We are called to do the best with our talents and abilities God has given us. To deny ourselves is to keep in harmony with the two great commandments, love God and 
and love our neighbour. There was a ray of hope for the disciples if they were listening, after the shock of what they had heard. That Jesus would be killed and he would rise again after three days. Jesus gives us hope for the future and we are called to follow him for that. We can have hope. The light shines in the darkness and it will not be destroyed. As we continue to make our way through Lent with our own individual commitments and a future that may seem uncertain for us all, God's ways are different from the ways of the world. We, like the disciples, may experience fear and a lack of faith. But we can be encouraged and strengthened by Jesus as we continue through Lent. And let us remember what the voice of God says to each one of us. This is my son. Listen to him. Let us stir, stand and declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come to an end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray to you for your church brothers and sisters in Christ scattered throughout the world. We pray for each one of them that we may be conformed by holy Lent of prayer, study, fasting and almsgiving to the way of God, show us so wonderfully in the name of Jesus Christ, most royal. We pray for our brothers and sisters in our midwives of Northern Uganda, that 
jealousy and division. And we pray for Christopher, our bishop, for bishops Nicholas and David, and all the parishes and people of this diocese of Liverpool. Jesus, who shows us the way. Lord, in your mercy, in the air of our prayer. We pray for the peoples and nations of this world. For an end to injustice and suffering. in their role of great responsibility for the lives of other people. Pray for our Queen, for our family, for our Prime Minister and Government, our Members of Parliament and all who advise them. against the coronavirus. We pray for all who take counsel for the well-being of others. Those who have died, rejoicing that the faithful departed are called to share in the life of Christ in his heavenly banquet. We pray for those who mourn. Father, and send these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? 
Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our plans to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and joy with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. From Zion in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From Zion in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. is the mystery of faith. And Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mary of Magdala, and all the saints, May praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because the Lord will share in one bread. You take away the existence of the world. Have mercy on us. Thou God, we take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Thou God, we take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Join in with me. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving. Do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. Be not worthy so much as to have the promise of the Lord table. But you are so Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with the forgiveness of the blood, and that we may ever live for the world of him in heaven and us.
Almighty God. You see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all wicked thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your grace and glory. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.